Hello and welcome to Once More With Feelings live reviews. Joined for the first time in quite a while by Richard. Hello. Um, the last time he was with us was way back some point last year. I, I am inclined to say probably mid... I think summer. It's yeah. a, I get a beginning vibes of summer. Yeah. Band made. Yeah. Way back then. I remember it was pretty warm, but honestly, who can even tell nowadays yeah. what that means? Well, consider the fact that for the most of today, it's been 33 degrees. It's been pretty hot. It was a pretty hot day for a concert. Yeah. Pretty hot day to be smushed against a gorillion people who are all dancing. Skanking in a lot of instances, because... Golly! Because we went to see the Mighty Mighty Boss Stones. Mighty Mighty Boss Stones. Um... So this is an instance where it's completely new territory for me mm. because I've never seen them live and, I, well, I've never been to a ska gig in any capacity. Mm. To be honest, I listen to a, quite a bit of ska music, but uh, I've only, I, I don't really go to gigs that much, so I think the only time I've actually seen a ska band live was actually a Christian one. They were actually pretty good. Sounds of Salvation. Back when I was still a good little Christian boy, but... The music holds up. They were good. Christian ska. That's just just. It that. totally works out. Actually, one of them, there was a very popular group called Sounds. Um, uh, sorry, uh, Five Iron Frenzy. Okay. They, yeah. Uh, they they were very popular in the states. A lot of non-religious ska fans used to go see them because they were just that good. Yeah. I mean, I'm not saying that you can't have good Christian music. I mean, Skillet is pretty decent, and they're right. a Christian metal band, which is one of those. Uh, hey, what? I think my my experience with Christian metal is probably probably limited to one hundred Philistine Foskins. They're a real group. I have their CDs somewhere. One of them. I I feel like this is the point where I just go. Some metal bands are weird. Why worry? Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. So we went to the Mighty Mighty Bustones, and uh, you know it was quite a quite a. Busy, yeah. busy thing, wasn't it? Yeah, quite a busy thing. We had a lot of fun. Mm. Um, I was not expecting to have... Like, I was expecting to enjoy myself. I wouldn't have got the tickets if I wasn't. Because, mm. like, whilst I'm not that experienced with Scar Bands, I do like the Boss Stones, and there are a few others, mainly from Second Wave, who I'm familiar with, like the Selector Special, a.k.a. Oh, yeah. Madness. Yeah. Mm. Um, which, that was kind of, We kind of got shades of that with... at points in oh, yeah. the show. Because, uh, I mean... The Boston's, like, in some ways, do have some aspects of them that do feel quite like that kind of era, mm. or even though they are considerably more... Pumped up, mm. and like in, in as in the way that lots of third wave bands are. Yeah, um, and of course, uh, any sort of similar, any sort of ska bands, whether sort of that you get over in Britain, of course, have a far heavier uh, second wave influence. Even if they do sort of try to sort of keep up with that uh, ska punk image, like um, simply because, well, I mean, Britain is home to second wave ska. Yeah. So there were three support bands mm. and. The Boston's themselves, so we've got quite a bit to unpack here. Oh, yes, yes, we do. Um, so first off, we had Thieves of Liberty. Yeah, really great band. Um, mm. They they sort of, they were a bit of a um, outlier amongst the four bands because they were yeah. more they were rocky. Weren't yeah. They? They were pretty much classic rock. I mean, yeah. you even had them do a cover of Whole Lot of Rosie by ACDC, mm. which they did actually say that um, because they're a new band, they're going to do a classic so people can sing along to it. Oh, that was a good idea. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the, like, they got me sort of nice and charged for the rest of the gig. Uh, like, even though they were dramatically different from the rest of the stuff, yeah. I was sort of like, yeah, I can dig this. I want to hear more mm. from them. Definitely recommend them. Yeah, it was quite cool to have a sort of a group, a group performing in London, all the way from up in Sunderland as well. Like, yeah. I mean, I know I'm obviously not a southerner, but uh, I live up there, and uh, so I 
gave a bit of a gave a big old yay when I when they said, "Oh yeah, we're from well, Borneo, up north," and I went, "Yeah, up north," and they were like, "Didn't expect anyone to be excited by that," <laughs> which, to be fair, is reasonable. Yeah. Bands don't usually go up that far north. Well, you say that, but metal originates in Birmingham, so. Well, yeah, but a lot of but a lot of bands don't tour up there. Everything I get excited for, you know, they go up as far as Manchester and then just and then yeah, they, well, they that's, get on a plane and go home. Well, that's because the cannibals get them. Oh yeah, absolutely. This... I'm a southerner. I've got to get in they're, jabs. They're, for they're the scared North. of the Vikings. <laughs> um, but ah. <laughs> uh, Mm. But yeah, they, they were a great band. Um, it, unfortunately, I do have to outline because there are some people who will get really picky about it and, uh, well, fuck it. They are a female-fronted band yeah. and the front woman is an amazing singer. Really great guitarist. Oh, yeah. Like, it's one of those things where it's all like, okay, let's see what you got. Yeah. I mean, I'm hardly going to judge female-fronted bands because two of my favourite bands, you've got Lacuna Coil mm. and Garbage. I wasn't even aware that this was really a contentious uh, thing, I guess. I suppose uh, some people, yeah, there's always going to be something. Yeah, people... um, where rock and metal are concerned, there's mm. always some... Even now, there's still some outliers, despite the fact that you've got the existence of bands like Girls School yeah. and Kitty, who... It's one of those. How how is this still a problem? See, in, in Sky, you don't really get that so much because, like, right off the top of my head, I mean, say what you will about Gwen Stefani, but no doubt had a had a very good reputation, I think. And well, uh, I've and, uh, listened to their stuff mm. when they when she was part of them, and yeah, she was. It was one of those. Why did you stop being so good? She had to follow their true calling as a weeaboo. Yeah, they had to let her go free. <laughs> Oh. You know, you take, you, you know, it's like uh, it's like Free Willy or something, and then just she jumped out of the scar band in and like into the sea and swam all the way to Japan. I mean, I I do have to question if that if there's more than just that one video where mm. she's a massive weeb. She's just a weeb. Like th it's it's common nowadays. Ah, okay. It's a, it's it's a it's a frequent disease. There is no cure. There's you just learn to live with it. You can rely on me for that. Um, also, like I mean, like Monique Powell from Save Ferris, she had an amazing voice. Mm -hmm. She followed the same kind of path and went and uh, tried to have a solo career, and uh, much like no doubt, it's just kind of come back together. Mm. Go but, figure. 